This video provides an overview of radar antennas used in air traffic management. The antenna is a crucial component of any radar system. It directs the high frequency transmission energy in a specific direction and detects the energy reflected from a target. Additionally, it provides information about the target's angular position to the radar system. The antenna is vulnerable to environmental conditions, and to protect it, a redome can be used to allow electromagnetic waves to pass through while keeping wind, snow, and ice away from the antenna. In the absence of a redome, the antenna must be robust and have powerful drives to operate smoothly even in turbulent weather conditions. Passive antennas are a popular choice for air traffic control because they allow for easy replacement of the amplifier module without interrupting the radar rotation or shutting down the system. Although some loss may occur on the feed lines, the advantages of minimal maintenance downtime make passive antennas the preferred option in this context. Active antennas are mainly utilized for military applications. In these cases, losses in the long lines are not acceptable. However, there was one exception, the Tempelhof radar of type AN, FPS-117. It was employed to monitor air traffic in the three flight corridors to West Berlin. Antennas that feature parabolic reflectors are widely utilized in air traffic control radar. The antenna is a resonant component. The efficiency of an antenna relies on its tuning to the intended wavelength for transmitting or receiving signals. The geometric dimensions of the antenna determine its resonant frequency. Waveguide slot antenna arrays are used in higher frequency ranges. They are easy to manufacture and therefore inexpensive. Phased array antennas can electronically steer the antenna beam without mechanical movement. However, they are still very expensive. The applications are mostly limited to precision approach radar. An antenna's characteristics are expressed in its radiation plot, which shows the power density over a solid angle. This radiation plot provides information about the antenna's beam shape, half power beam width, abbreviated to HPBW, and side lobe attenuation. It plots the power density as a function of the angle. The half power beam width is an important parameter of the antenna, which determines the angular resolution achievable by the radar. The two-dimensional long-range radar can detect objects up to 360 kilometers away and up to an altitude of 32 kilometers. During antenna measurements, only relative values to the maximum value are recorded which are then multiplied by the real positioning result of a measuring aircraft. This gives a measurement result for a small aircraft with an effective reflective area of about 2 square meters. For larger aircraft, the range can be extended up to 470 kilometers. In air traffic control, flight altitudes are given in feet and kilofeet, while distances are given in nautical miles. However, the scale can be easily converted. The measurement result therefore corresponds to an altitude of up to 105,000 feet and a distance of 200 nautical miles. The normal cruising altitude for commercial airplanes is between 33,000 and 42,000 feet, which is equivalent to 10,000 to 12,800 meters. However, to accommodate military aircraft, Air traffic control radars must also be capable of displaying a wider range of altitudes. The antenna gain is specified by the manufacturer of the antenna and cannot be affected by the user. The antenna gain derives from the directivity of the antenna. It is the comparison of the directional antenna with an isotropic radiator. The constant 4 pi remains in the equation from its surface area. The spherical surface is divided by the smallest possible receiving surface, lambda squared, to define the spherical surface as the maximum number of these surfaces. The geometric size of the antenna multiplied by a correction factor then gives the factor for the antenna gain. 
The power of the transmitter is now distributed over far fewer of these small lambda surfaces than with an isotropic radiator. The antenna gain depends on the ratio of its geometric area to the small lambda square area. The antenna gain is, therefore, dependent on the wavelength. It can deviate noticeably from the nominal value for broadband radar transmitters. One might now be surprised that when talking about a spherical surface, then the sphere radius is missing. However, the radius is also included in the calculation of the maximum number of small lambda square areas on the surface of the sphere and is, therefore, mathematically shortened. When it comes to directivity and antenna gain, the S-band antenna of a terminal area radar can be significantly smaller and lighter compared to an en-route radar operating in the L-band. It is important to note that the values mentioned here only refer to the passive reflector, also known as the secondary radiator. The primary radiator, on the other hand, is a smaller antenna element located at the focal point of the parabolic reflector. Please do not confuse the terms, primary or secondary radiator, with the terms, primary or secondary radar. Optical laws can be applied to reflection from a parabolic reflector as a secondary radiator. Each individual ray is subject to a fundamental law. The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. The parabolic curvature ensures that all of these rays converge at a single point known as the focal point, or simply the focus. In most cases, the primary radiators in the focus of a parabolic reflector have a directional characteristic, which means that the reflector doesn't need to be as large. These symmetrical parabolic antennas are primarily used in instrumentation radars and weather radars, where high accuracy is crucial. The design has a drawback. The main radiator obstructs the beam that is perpendicular to the reflector. This causes a standing wave in the feed line as the horn radiator receives the power reflected by the part that is exactly perpendicular. The offset parabolic antenna is often used to illuminate only the upper half of the parabola. This is done to avoid casting a shadow by the primary radiator. However, the reflector in such antennas is more challenging to calculate, and there are losses due to a change in polarization during reflection on the outer surfaces of the reflector at an angle of around 45 degrees. In a symmetrical parabolic reflector, these losses are compensated for by the polarization changes on the centrally symmetrical opposite surfaces. However, with the offset antenna, the lower half of the reflector is missing so these polarization changes are retained. For a surveillance radar, these losses in reception are only slight, but for a weather radar, they can lead to measurement errors. Therefore, weather radars use only the symmetrical reflector shape with a central primary radiator. Electromagnetic waves have a property called polarization which describes the direction of the amplitude vector of transverse waves. Transverse waves have two directions, the wave vector which indicates the direction of propagation, and the amplitude vector, which is always perpendicular to the wave vector. The polarization of an electromagnetic wave is determined by its electric field direction, which defines the direction of oscillation. A simple dipole has a constant electric field direction bound to its position in space. However, the direction of polarization can be any position in space. The preferred directions of linear polarization are horizontal and vertical. Circular polarization is a phenomenon that occurs when two emitters are positioned 90 degrees apart and are fed with a phase difference of 90 degrees. The image demonstrates that the linearly vertically polarized component, represented by shades of blue in the y-axis, lags behind the linearly horizontally polarized component, represented by shades of red in the x-axis, by 90 degrees. The field vector, symbolized by the rotating arrow, is the sum of both voltage vectors, and thus, it rotates around the z-axis and the wave vector with a constant magnitude and angular velocity. Over time, the entire screw shifts in the direction of propagation. 
There are two types of circular polarization, right circular and left circular polarization. If the amplitude of the two linear components is different, an elliptical polarization would result. In such a case, the magnitude of the field vector constantly changes periodically as it rotates around the wave vector. Circular polarization is used in radar to suppress interferences of weather clutter. Now let's examine how and why. To do this, let's look at two individual raindrops whose distance from the radar differs by only a few centimeters. However, they are close enough for the reflected energies to overlap. The echo signal of the raindrop on the right is slightly delayed due to the longer runtime to the more distant raindrop, resulting in the meeting of two different amplitude vectors at the same time. We have chosen the distance here so that both amplitude vectors are opposite and therefore cancel each other out. The long black arrow connects all locations having the same delay. It's possible to move the marker for simultaneity from one amplitude vector to another, like a moving window. This shows that this cancellation applies to almost all amplitude vectors. However, at the beginning of one echo signal and the end of the other, half an oscillation remains that isn't deleted. When using radar to detect weather clutter, the echo signals from raindrops at different distances can cancel each other out on a statistical average. However, some residual reflected energy remains, which the radar's internal interference protection system has to suppress. Real point targets like aircraft have large reflective surfaces and are only slightly attenuated, while the smaller reflective surfaces distributed over the entire aircraft are more attenuated. Therefore, circular polarization is effective in suppressing strong weather clutter. Unfortunately, real flying targets are also somewhat attenuated. The radar therefore has a slightly shorter maximum range. Circular polarization should only be used if there is strong weather clutter. Circular polarization cannot be used in weather radar. There, linear horizontal and vertical polarization are used simultaneously and used to measure the size of raindrops and to detect hail. You might also visit the radar tutorial on the internet. It is easy to find, use the keyword radar basics, and no matter which search engine you use, it will be listed first in the results. Thank you for your attention.